This is a PC assembly video and first we're going to start with the uh, case and in this case we're using a Cooler Master Storm Enforcer. This is a relatively new case um, and the sole purpose of this is, is not really to do an unboxing but rather it is a, uh, a more of a how-to on assembling a uh, your basic uh, PC. All right, so uh, let's start with the uh, the case so we can get the standoffs in the right position for the motherboard. All right, so we got our little screw out of there, and uh, there's the case, and uh, we have a box with accessories that came with it. Let's see what we got here. Have the uh, the quick fasteners for the uh, drives. Adapter bracket, um, standoffs and screws in this bag, and uh, looks like some basic instructions on the standoffs, and it looks like a SSD adapter for a standard bag. And let's see, what's this say? Standoff socket manual. Find socket from fitting pack. Install standoff by socket. And then screw it down. Oh, okay, that's cool. So you don't need a hex wrench. You just use the uh, the screw adapter, and you can use a regular screwdriver. That's neat. All right. So here are the uh, the specs. If you want, you can pause and look at those. And here is what you get in the fittings. All right. And uh, looks like a uh, looks like a good case. Cooler Master Storm. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, match up the mounting uh, holes for the standoffs and uh, prep our motherboard to put in there. Okay. Now we moved over to the decks. This is the ASUS uh, P8P67 Pro. It's a uh, has very good reviews on it. Um, so let's get it out here. It's an anti-static bag. Looks good, and uh, got the uh, manuals, the cover we're going to need, has some uh, adapter help you connect the, uh, the lights and the reset and the power button, the speaker, those are, it kind of helps you uh, do it away from the motherboard and then just plug that into the motherboard I assume. SLI connector, USB 3.0, SATA cables. I'm going to use the uh, USB 3.0 that's on the case. And I'm only having one video card, so I don't need that. And that's it. And this is the uh, new B3 revision. And uh, P8, P67. It's a good, good motherboard. All right, and here's what you should be getting with the motherboard. Um, the uh, Q-Shield, they call it. These two serial ATA 6 gigabit a second cables. Two serial ATA 3.0 gigabit per second cables. The SLI bridge, the uh, quick connector kit, the 3.0 bracket, user guide, and the support CD. Um, but you know, you can always download the latest drivers from the website. I don't recommend you uh, use the CD. Um, and it just has instructions and basic information in there, how to install a CPU and the memory, things of that nature. All right, let's, uh, that's that. Let's go look at the processor. All right, and uh, I recommend you attach your wrist strap. And um, you can't really see it too clearly, but let me show you. Has a guide that tells you an index of where to put the um, the standoffs, and they already have some standoffs in there, and of course designed by Cooler Master, and it tells you for ATX use uh, A B C D E F J K and L. So let's see if that matches up. All right, here's the uh, brass-looking standoffs that we're going to install, and. Um, you really don't have to worry like you did before about having to put the motherboard over the holes and making sure they match up because they have the easy guide. So let's see if this guide works. 
and it says do A. So we take our standoff and we can hand tighten it down. And it says B, we got B, C, and here's C. There we go, and we have uh, three, three left over. Now this is the coolest new addition. I, I've never seen this before. It's a, uh, it's an adapter, so you can tighten them down using a, uh, a Phillips screwdriver. So um, get my uh, Japanese industrial screwdriver and uh, tighten these down. I don't see the really. It's not really crucial getting it ultra tight, but uh, just get it snug. Snug is fine. So now let's see if our standoffs match up. Um, of course, make sure you have your grinding strap on. And here's the uh, motherboard, which smells amazing, by the way. And uh, let's see if these match up. And they do. We got uh, one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay. So, um, where is, there we go. Let's put this in there. Wow, that actually snaps in very, very nice and snug. It's very impressive. And it kind of has some foam there, which uh, gives you some, um, <clears throat> excuse me, good grounding contact, which is good. So um, let's do our test fit before we have our CPU in there. It's a little harder to handle when you got the weight of the uh, cooler, cooling fan and heat sink. So let's do a little quick test fit. we look good. Now since our case does not have a removable motherboard tray we're going to add several components with the motherboard out of the case. With the motherboard you just put on a flat surface and you unclip the arm that holds the CP low plate in place and you flip back the arm. Like so. This will lift the low plate out of the way. And you'll now see a need to remove the protective plastic tab that covers the pins in the socket. Now, the one ASUS uses requires you remove it from one side first, and others might need you to, you know, grab from both sides. But uh, don't throw it away, because you might need it if you need to return the board to the store, or you need to return it to the uh, manufacturer. Um, they will not accept it if you don't have that tab. So, um, also do not touch any of the gold contacts in the socket. Um, bending one may kill the motherboard. So remove the cover by lifting this tab only it says. It has a little picture. Let me try to zoom in on that for you. Oops. So remove the cover by lifting the tab only. The cap must be placed if returning the motherboard. It says it right there. So let me get my hand out of the way. There's that little tab they're talking about. And there we go. So you want to keep you want to keep this in a uh, safe place. Okay. Let's take off some of these uh, stickers. We don't need that. It just tells you uh, you know it's new. We can put that on the uh, back of the manual if you want to keep it. 
saying how it has a Bluetooth module on board. That's kind of cool. You could uh, hook it to your uh, Android phone. And there's a little bit of uh, plastic here. You should probably take off. There we go. And uh, that looks like we're ready. Let's go on to the next step. All right, here's our CPU. It's a uh, LGA 1155 uh, socket. And this is the i5-2500K. Um, it's a good uh, midline processor. You won't have to spend a heck of a lot of money. And uh, it's a good value. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the one I chose. And there's a little factory sill right there you got to cut open. Like so. And there you'll see the uh, processor and the uh, heatsink. And it already has uh, some thermal paste on there. So uh, I'm going to try it out, see how the thermal paste does. I'm just going to use the stock, stock everything. So let's uh, try to see if we can get this out of here. There we go. Now we probably don't want to uh, take this off until we're ready. But uh, you can see the stock thermal paste they put on there. So let's keep that covered. And it uh, looks like these are a little, um, you know, they're done there by hand. You don't need any special tools to screw that down. Um, seems you just uh, push it down and it locks into the motherboard. So that's pretty, pretty quick and easy. Um, there's the processor. See if we can get it out without damaging it. Okay, so there's a latch there, and you just kind of push that tab in, and this kind of swings down like so, and then it comes out. There you go. And there's our processor. And of course, just make sure you're you're grounded. And um, if you look, you'll see there's a couple notches um, on the chip, and there's also the indicator that shows you where um, pin one is, and you line that up to the motherboard. And um, you just hold it parallel to the socket, and you just gently lower it in place, and uh, just make sure you line up those two notches. And then uh, you fold the plate down and lock it in. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now let's uh, install the CPU. And uh, we got it in the uh, in the case here still, so we're very carefully going to open it up, and we're going to try not to get any grease from our fingers on the um, on the heatsink portion. There we go, and uh, has some good weight to it actually. It feels pretty heavy. You can see those little uh, notches there, uh, right there, and one on the other side there. And you'll see the little uh, gold uh, triangle there. And uh, that should match up with that little dot you see there. And you can see the notches matching here. You want to make sure you don't touch these pins. You don't want to bend or break or anything. So um, we're just going to very carefully make sure we hold it parallel and then lower it down. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, that went down amazingly smooth. I had to pause it because uh, my head would have been in the way anyway because I wanted to get down there with it. But um, it's a zip socket, which means zero insertion force, and it is exactly what it says. You don't have to push down anymore. It just kind of lays on top and just floats there. Um, so you just go ahead and uh, close this. And uh, you can see it makes solid contact with the shroud of the, of the heat sink. And then uh, just kind of lower it down carefully. Just make sure you're really not in those notches and you got this right. And uh, if you don't, you'll know it. So uh, just kind of lower that down, and then gently slide this shut. And there we go. Now it's pushed down and uh, locked into place. So let's uh, go on to the next step.